Hi, my name's Darren and welcome to my workshop and welcome to another edition of 3D Prints in the Workshop. <laughs> Let's start off with this one from Dan MC. It's a little attachment that will fit on the top of a glue bottle, a tight bond for example, I think it was designed for tight bond, and it's got little tiny holes through it and in the top and it's designed for putting glue in your domino holes. Now all my glue is in this glue bottle at the moment so I wasn't able to test it in conjunction with the tight bond bottle. It's all in there now, it is tight bond. Um, so Dan made an adapter, which is really great. You've got to get a couple of O-rings. I've got an O-ring in there and I still need to put an O-ring in here. But that just screws in there. And then quite easily, there you go, perfect fit. And I'll, I'll give you a bit of a demo, hang on. Okay, so just imagine you've made yourself a little domino hole. And let's give this a little bit of a squeeze. You can see the glue. I can see it coming. There you go. And you see it's just coming out the tip there. So it gets the glue all down the bottom of your mortise, which is good, but on the sides rather than the very bottom. And the reason that's good then is you drag this up, of course, it's going to glue the insides of your mortise rather than just leaving a big blob of glue at the bottom if the holes were in the end. Recently I went camping and I took this tool bag with me and in the tool bag I put my battery drill and a few other bits and pieces and a couple of batteries. I use the battery drill for raising and lowering the legs on the camper trailer. Makes it a lot quicker and it's also good just in case of an emergency. I carry a pump as well and so this is the battery that runs the pump. And to stop them from shorting together what I did was I popped them in these plastic bags and sealed them. So that way anything else in the tool bag wasn't going to rattle around and short these out. It worked but as soon as I got back I printed out these and these are really good. They're very simple. They just sit over the edge like that. They're a tight fit, they don't fall off. And of course they protect the metal from shorting out on anything else. A very simple print, it took about 13 minutes. But if you're chucking your batteries in a bag where they could touch other things, well worth the 13 minutes. If I'm pronouncing it right, these are made by Chaxon. Uh, of course I'll leave a link as I always do. Now you've probably noticed if you've watched a few of these videos that I like to organise my tool drawers and such. And I had my measuring and marking drawer here under the bench really nicely laid out and it looked pretty neat. But since I laid that all out, a whole heap of my measuring and marking tools have ended up inside my apron. And so some of the things were gone from the drawer and some other things were chucked in and it wasn't a great fit anymore. And I went and bought myself one of these UG1 gauges from Bridge City. <laughs> it's nice. It comes in a really nice box, but the box takes up a fair bit of space. So rather than just stick that box in the drawer and arrange other things around it, I've made its own specially fitted tray. This piece of foam actually came in the packaging with it, so I just lifted that out and just glued that in there with a little bit of glue. And it fits in there. Lovely. So if you've got a universal gauge you want in your drawer and you want easy access to it, this might be a good tray for you. And of course, while I was doing that, I rearranged the rest of the drawer. So these are my marking gauges. Come around and have a look at the drawer anyway. So this is what my measuring and marking drawer looks like now. Hopefully I can dig up an old before picture. But yeah, here we go. I've got everything laid out nicely in there. I won't go into great detail. You've seen all this sort of thing before. But of course, I will make all these trays available for download. Look for links below. And next up, Jeremy K. Mack brings us these clamp pads for the micro jig clamps. Now, micro jig make something very similar to this themselves, but you know, hey, this is a bit cheaper. <laughs> Printing out your own. And they're great, they're a tight fit. They squeeze on there, they take a little bit of effort to get on. Not a huge amount, but that's good in that they then don't fall off. And if you've ever looked at what these can do on the MicroG website, they're quite versatile. Because these tilt, they can be used for applying pressure at different angles, and also the little divots in them can be used for holding down things like circular stock. Now he's made them available in different shapes and sizes. We've got rounded, that's fully rounded, rounded with a flat end. I'm not too sure why yet. <laughs> no doubt that'll become handy at some point. And a more rectangular clamp. So let's say for example I wanted to drill a hole in the end of this round piece of dowel for some reason. What I could do is I could pop it on my drill press and it's nice little groove there that it's got for holding stock central to the bit. All right. 
and then I can take my micro jig clamp with one of these clamp pads on it and slide it up through the table. There we go. That's actually clamped that down really well. And just proof of the pudding. And there we are, let me bring that closer, you can see that now has a hole through it. Very handy little clamping pads. And last, but certainly not least, is my blade and bridge bow for measuring the height of router bits, saw blades and so on off your table. Now you could use something like this, but uh, maybe you don't have one of these and maybe you don't want to fork out the money for one of these. We've got everything on here from two to 20 millimeters in one millimeter steps. So certainly aimed more at the router table, but if you're doing shallow cuts at the table saw, you can use this there too. All right, let's take our bit and blade bridge here and set her out a bit. Let's pick something at random, let's say 15 mil. That'd be a lot in one cut, but let's say we're, we're up to that. There's our 15 on this side. We've got our evens on that side and our odds on this side. Okay, so we said 15 millimeters. 15 is on the right hand side of the bow. So we're going to set obviously to the highest point of the bit, which is usually just here. A couple of obvious safety things. I'm touching the router bit. So this is off in three places. It's turned off at the router. It's turned off at the front of the router table and it's turned off at the wall. Don't cut your fingers off and blame me. <laughs> All right. So now what we have to do quite simply. Now we just bring the bit up until it touches. And there we are, it's just touching there. Okay, as we can see, that's set for 15 millimeters there. So just to prove the point, let's grab my Bridge City Universal gauge and we'll just lower that fella down there. And what do we get? Sure enough, I'm sure you can see that there, 15 millimeters. That brings us to the end of another 3D prints in the workshop. Hopefully there's a print or two in there that you'll find useful. I certainly have. Have a great day and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.